I'm Christopher Hart, and it is my privilege to serve as the chairman of the NTSB. And joining me are Vice Chairman Bella Dinzar, Member Robert Sumwalt, and Member Earl Weiner. Today we meet in open session as required by the government in the Sunshine Act to consider the fatal crash of a Hawker 700A into an apartment building in Akron, Ohio, while on final approach about 1.8 miles short of runway 25 at Akron Fulton International Airport. The captain, first officer, and seven passengers lost their lives in the crash. On behalf of my fellow board members and the entire NTSB staff, I would like to extend our sincerest condolences to the family and friends of those who died in this crash. Nothing can replace your loved ones, but we hope that this investigation will help us to prevent such tragedies in the future. Fortunately, the residents of the building were not at home, and while people on the ground faced property losses and dislocation from, from their residences, none was killed or injured. The accident flight was an on-demand charter flight operated by a company called ExecuFlight under Part 135 of the Federal Aviation Regulations. Part 135 was created to protect passengers and pilots in such operations. Many con conscientious air charter services take care to establish and maintain safe operations pursuant to Part 135, and Federal Aviation Administration inspectors are assigned to each operator to ensure that the regulations and company procedures are being followed. A traveler boards an on-demand charter flight with the assumption that these government and company protections are in effect. However, in the accident that you will hear about today, we found a flight crew, a company, and FAA inspectors who fell short of their obligations in regard to safety. As you will hear, the flight crew did not follow company procedures. Against company procedures, for example, the crew flew an unstabilized approach and used an unapproved flap configuration. In addition, the flight crew's approach briefing was conducted in violation of executive flight procedures and was unstructured, inconsistent, and incomplete. As a result, there was no shared plan for executing the approach and landing. Required checklists and callouts were disregarded on the accident flight. The disregarded procedures I have mentioned, and you will hear about others today, read like pages from a basic text for preventing accidents, derived from a long history of accidents in aviation. Yet these procedures and the accident lessons that they represent were ignored. This disregard for safety was not confined to the actions of the flight crew. It extended to their employer, ExecuFlight. Our investigators found organizational factors in hiring, training, and schedule, scheduling, and other practices that predicated, predated the accident flight. For example, the company's crew resource management training included PowerPoint presentations and a multiple choice test. The captain's test answers, according to the CRM manual, merited a failing grade of 40 percent, yet ExecuFlight had graded it 100 percent, glossing over CRM training deficiencies that could have been corrected. It is not surprising that CRM issues were featured prominently in this accident flight. Finally, at the federal level, FAA oversight of, of ExecuFlight was insufficient to catch and correct the company's noncompliance with the regulations and with its own standard operating procedures. When travelers arrange an on-demand charter flight, they do so believing that the flight will be safe. They implicitly trust that FAA standards, the charter company's standard operating procedures, and the professionalism of the pilots will protect them from harm. They have a right to believe that these procedures are, that these protections are practiced on every flight without exception so that they can be sure that such procedures apply to their flight. It is incumbent upon the FAA and Part 135 operators to ensure this protection. Today, tragically, we consider the events that took the lives of nine people on board this flight, including both flight crew members. The protections built into the system were not applied, and they should have been.